All right, we are going to be painting a adorable stack of books today. Um, I'm going to start by using a flat brush. This is because I want to make some easy rectangles. When you're painting this stack of books, I suggest picking a color or a group of colors and working with that throughout the painting. It helps all the books feel connected, but you could of course do a whole rainbow or random set of books. I will be using mostly blues, maybe some teals and other colors today. I'm going to start by putting my biggest book at the bottom of the stack. This way, as I build up my books, I know the center of my paper. I know kind of how long or skinny to make them so that it's kind of logical. I don't have really long books sitting on top of too short of books. You'll also notice I am jumping around my stack. I am not stacking them from bottom to top. With watercolor paint, you want the paint to be dry before you paint next to it, otherwise those colors will blend, which can look super cool when you want to do it on purpose, but for this painting we want to keep separate shapes so we don't want those colors to blend when they're side by side. When you are painting with um, watercolor paint as well, you want to think about uh, what you want to do while it's still wet. So if I wanted to mix a color into the same rectangle that I already painted, I'd want to do that while they're wet. Uh, for this, I think I'm keeping most of my rectangles just one solid color, so I'll mix up the color I want and then paint it. So this is wet on dry technique so that I can see the hard edges of each shape that I'm painting. Now here you see me doing what I told you not to do. I'm putting a wet rectangle right next to the dry one. Later, because I plan on adding pen lines and details, I could separate these two rectangles if they end up mixing together more than I would like. Now, the hardest part is where to put the next book or what shape to do it. I felt very indecisive throughout this whole painting process. Um, sometimes you gotta just go for it. Another thing to think about is the different shapes or types of books. You could also paint the book where you're looking at the side and so you can see the pages of the book. That's what I was trying to do, but it got too skinny, so I just filled it in and made it another uh, binder edge of the book instead. And then I really do want those books to be stacked, so I do need my new rectangle that I'm adding here to touch the one underneath it as I'm filling in these spaces. So I'm also paying attention not just about where I want the book, but also which rectangles are dry and ready for me to paint another one next to them. Here I'm finally figuring out that um, side perspective of the book where I'll have the white pages showing as well. So instead of painting a regular rectangle, I painted kind of a sideways U shape so that I can go back and add those pages later with pen or with different kinds of paint. I want to have a variety, so I'm going to do some more different sizes. It's okay if some of the books are a little longer. It's okay if you add details and designs. Again, I'll plan on doing a lot of details with my pen, but any details I want in color, I do need to do now. So I'm waiting for those dry spots and adding some layers and designs once the paint is already dry so my designs don't just mix and blend in the inside. Another thing to do, which I've kind of mentioned already, is the variety idea. So making some of your books skinny, some of them wide, some a little longer, some a little shorter. If you have details on one book, maybe your next book will be more simple or plain. If you have a blue, maybe next to it goes a teal or a light blue or a dark blue. And so really thinking about that changing of color is going to help make your painting more interesting because there's variation or variety. So here I had a really big book, so I knew I had a room to add a more interesting edge to the cover, as opposed to those little skinny books, I might only use or add small details. I'm using a very um, pointy edge of my flat brush, but you might also want to just switch to a detail brush for things like this, making sure that the book you are painting your details on is completely dry. When you are creating your book designs, anything you want white, has to be not painted because there isn't really white paint when it comes to watercolor painting. So for that book, I wanted to keep that rectangle area white, so I painted around it. Now you can use white gouache as a way to add white back to a painting, or I tend to use my white gel pen to add white details to a painting. But if you want the truest, whitest white, then you have to leave the paper white showing. 
Here I finally switched to my detail brush so that I can really get this long skinny book and leave the center open for those pages. I so far only have one other book that you can see the pages of and I don't really want there to be a lonely unique book like that or it'll stand out more than I want it to so I'm going to add a few others like this one where you can also see the pages and that way a few books in the stack all go together even if they're separated or spread apart. Now one thing you can do too when you're adding details with your paintbrush is you could create some pretend labels on your books just by making some varied wiggly lines with some dashes and dots kind of alluding to letters without actually putting the title of the book on the book. Now you of course could put a title of a book you really like if you want to make it a stack of books that you've read or enjoyed um, but it's kind of fun to do the, the not real words. However, then I decided, well, why not write uh, today years old because I was today years old when I painted this painting. Um, but I realized that I just did not like how it looked. So I tried to make it kind of messy enough that you couldn't quite read it, but then you could read it and then it just looked messy. So I end up kind of going over it a bunch and trying to make it harder to read. And I'm just going to fast forward through that. Now on top of my stack of books, I'm going to be adding a teacup. I'm going to use um, a half circle sort of shape to make that teacup and fill in most of it with paint, but leave a little bit of a white spot so that it can look like there is light shining on it. You could also put a plant on top of your stack of books. You could put a book that's standing upright. You could put a little photo frame. You could put um, really anything else you think of. Uh, and then for my teacup, I'm going to add a little... Um, fancy handle just to make that design a little more interesting. I'm using a tiny detail brush for these things because it's just tiny details. So it is nice to have a few different sizes of brushes on hand. Doesn't really matter what brand or style. I'm not picky about my brushes as long as they work um, and they're pretty soft. If you get one that has really stiff bristles, then it doesn't might not work as well for watercolor. Also, you might notice I don't really pay attention to which color names I use. Um, so I'm sorry if you want to be told exact colors to use. I don't really do that. I just like looking at my palette and figuring out which one looks interesting and then using it and I don't pay attention to what the names are. So I used a lot of blues and greens and mixed them to make some teals and I don't know what exact colors they were. So my apologies. Now, while I've got my detail brush out, I'm going to add a few little lines to my books to make those pages easy to see. Um, but without really filling them in all the way or making them exact. The thing with watercolor paint is because it doesn't do super neat details all the time, it's helpful to use it and thinking about it like a suggestion or an illusion or you're alluding to what's there. You're giving the impression of what's there. You're not actually drawing every single little detail or page. Now, once the painting is done being painted, it does need to be dried before we can use our pen to make our final details. I use Micron pens, those I do have a brand preference. They are permanent and, and waterproof, so if I wanted to draw with pen first and paint on top of them, they would not bleed or smudge at all. Now I'm going to go back and just look for random bits and spots to put different designs, details. My books, if they um, the paint blended together, I could separate them with an outline. I'm really, again, just trying to add more variation. If you need ideas, I'd suggest going to a bookshelf and taking a closer look. What sort of designs, dashes, lines, shapes, what kinds of things are on the edges of books? Um, or just Google some interesting book things and you'll probably find some ideas there. I'm just thinking of simple shapes, lines, patterns, things like that. And I'm trying to, again, keep it varied. So the ones with titles aren't side by side. The ones with rectangles aren't side by side. This way, as you look around my picture, there are differences and different things to look at and find interesting. And that's a finished painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign it with my pen. I use my initials in the bottom corner.
I hope you had fun uh, painting along with me. You can check out more tutorials on my YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything in the future. And go ahead and check out my Instagram and see behind the scenes at Alyssa Whetstone Art. Happy painting!